Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and in this video I want to talk about amplifier selection for your sound quality system. If you haven't seen the previous videos of this series then go, go to the description please. Um, I added a link to the playlist then you can see all the previous videos but hopefully by now many of you um, have been following these videos so this time let's talk about amplifiers, right? So we could follow signal processing, uh, source signal processing. Now we get to the amplifiers. First, we have to establish how much power you really, really need, because that's what most people uh, focus on. Now you could write down your main things that you look at when you go on a website and, okay, let's find an amplifier. I'm sure you would write down, okay, this is the amount of power I need from my front speakers, and this is the amount of power I need for my subwoofer. That would, that would be pretty much what you would look at and obviously the price and then that's it but there's so much more to it that you really have to look at um, first of all I would I would establish one thing how loud obviously because most people don't even know what 90 DB means right let's say can you can you tell now you know if, if you listen to music how loud 90 DB is or how loud is speaking level is well when you talk at this normal level or when you have someone sitting right next to you in the car that normal speaking level is in between 75 and 80 80 db if you speak up a little bit more right now like me that's around 85 and when you have to shout you know because because you're blasting the music or you sit in a convertible and the other post person doesn't understand what you're talking. That's around 90 dB, roughly. So, you know, you don't need a lot of power to enjoy music on a, on a long drive. Um, and when you think about sensitivity of speakers, which are like, you know, in between 85, 88 dB, the average, um, then you really, you know, what you need is like a single watt. A single watt on your mid-range and on your tweeter is loud. And then of course you need a little bit more power for the mid-bass um, and, and a little bit more um, for your subwoofer. So realistically, if, if you plan a simple daily good sounding system, I would say 60, 80 watt for your front speakers per channel is plenty. And then 250, 300 for the subwoofer, let's say a single 12 in the trunk is, is, is again, is, is more than enough because that amount of power is gonna give you enough to, to play loud with the decent amount of um, dynamics and have enough bass to feel the front. So you have enough bass what's, you know, to play back what's on the recording. If you want big bass, you really wanna feel it, you wanna blast it at times, then obviously, yes, you have to have a look at also uh, the application that you have with your subwoofer. If it's a very um, insensitive setup, like let's say accurate, um, subwoofers in a sealed enclosure then that won't be as sensitive as a ported box um, or if you have IB subs that's a different story again you know when you want to plan how much power you need for IB subs but overall as I said 60 80 watt for the front speakers and then 250 300 for the sub is enough um, if you want to go beyond that then there's another thing you really have to focus on how much power can you really get from the car? Because you you know it's not home audio. You, you can't plug it into the socket, um, and you have to have a look at what battery you have in the car and what the alternator is is happy to supply. Because if you have a let's say a 120 amp alternator, that doesn't mean that you can you can draw 120 amp from 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 the engine and from the alternator. Because that alternator was designed to supply power for all the consumers in the car, for the aircon, all the lights, um, fans, and you know everything else, and have enough headroom to top up and charge your battery. Um, and that's pretty much it. So when you have a 120 amp um, alternator, and realistically, you know you have let's say 50, 60 amp to play with, probably like half of it. So. But to be fair, that 50, 60 amp is enough for a sound quality system blasting even 40 out. 
Uh, people think that, you know, you need hundreds, hundreds of amps. But in reality, if you clamp it, if you buy a clamp meter, you will be well surprised that as music is dynamic, it's not like playing, you know, pink noise, full tilt or playing burps like an SPL. That draws a lot because that's continuous, you know, signal. But music is dynamic. You have peaks in it. But in, in reali reality, uh, you use like less, less the, you know, half, half amount of, of the power that you may imagine. So, um, you know, if you want a big system where you, let's say you want 150, 200 watts on your front speakers and you want like a kilowatt on your subwoofer or even more on, on your subs, then you have to start to think about, you know, how am I going to supply power for that? Because most people just want big amplifiers, you know, hook it up onto the uh, car's factory power supply and you will have dimming lights, uh, you won't have uh, decent power and, and current flow for your amps so they will struggle because your uh, voltage will drop. Um, so then, you know, you have to think about extra battery, a second battery minimum at the back, a better quality batteries, uh, AGMs or lithiums, then prices go up. So it's a bit more complex story than just looking at price and power. Also, when it comes to quality, most people say that, you know, there's no difference between amplifiers when it comes to uh, playing music back, but there is, there's a huge difference. It's, it's not just how much power it creates. And I know, sorry guys, if there are many people in America watching this video right now, I know that most of the Americans are super, super crazy about whether an amplifier is making a rated power. You know, if it's rated to four times hundred and it's only doing 95 watts then ah, it's shit <laughs> that's that's bonkers no if an amplifier sounds good that sounds good from a single watt too and that's what you should really focus on because no matter how much power you have if the system sounds shit from a single watt then does it really matter how much power you use no so Rather buy something that sounds great, you know, look at specs like signal noise ratio, very important. If you have an amplifier with a signal noise ratio like 80 or even like 90 dB, I would look further up. Anything above 90 is okay. If you want really high-end audiophile quality, you want to have an amplifier that has like 110 or even higher, 120 dB signal to noise ratio. That's what I would really focus on firstly. Um, but as when, yeah, when it comes to the importance of components, then some people may hang me for this. But maybe I would focus the list on the amplifier first. I would focus more on speaker locations in the car, where you can put speakers. Focus on how you install those speakers the best way for, for you know, what application you can have. Focus on tuning. And then just make sure that you have solid, good quality amplifier to start with. Especially if it's a daily car, then there are other things to also think about. And actually, I'm gonna talk about that in the trunk of this car, this 10-day uh, SQ build I did roughly a year ago. So then I can I can pinpoint a few more things to you that you know most people never never really think about until they start installing. And then, oopsie, this wasn't the best choice because I can't fit it, things like that. Let's go to the trunk of this and then I'll carry on. All right, so when it comes to installation of, of, of an ampli amplifier or multiple amplifiers, then you have to really think about space as well, because if you want to keep a trunk practical, then, you know, where do you really put it? Like in this one, um, this setup actually could have had a tiny little um, digital amplifier. And again, some people want to hang me for that. But, you know, technology has improved so much that there are quite many really good quality digital amplifiers. And now you say, oh, no, 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 I only need AB class or A class amplifiers. Yes, if everything else is given, your, your installation, speaker installation and tuning is, is as good as possible and you can't improve anything else, then yeah, go for really good quality amplifiers. But then you have to think about, you know, where do you really put it in the trunk? If it's a short car, fair enough. But if it's a daily, then how are you going to sort out that these amplifiers don't overheat, right? Because like this trunk as well, 
um, this rack is on hinges so it's easy to tip it up get to the spare wheel it has a plate sitting on the top which is like an inch above the amps so there's enough air inside plus there are gaps in the rack so air can flow within um, and and these amps have never ever uh, had any problem with overheating even in summer where in here in this central european country in the summer it can easily be 40 40 degrees 35 40 degrees and in the trunk you end up having you know 60 degrees um so you have to think about heat dissipation um you have to think about practicality how you install it also when you have multiple amps then you will end up having way more wiring you will need more power wires you know you will have to run more power to the amps um, you will have to run more signal to the amps obviously if you have an active system whereas all this could have had one single h channel amplifier all integrated no need for signal cables no need for so many power cables no power distribution nothing where you can save a lot the only reason why i ended up having this for example for my dad was because i wanted an ib sock for him that i i needed a bit more power for plus the freeway front so this way i had more flexibility having a bigger monoblock for the sub um, but in reality for a, a simple daily car you could just have as i said you know something like there are quite many amps like let's say helix has uh, the p6d sp a six channel amplifier with built-in um, dsp that has rcas out um, for a monoblock running the sub or zapco also has uh, an h channel digital amplifier with built-in dsp and there are quite a few around which work really well um and you really really shouldn't worry about that because now let's say okay i have all the money i buy brex big amplifiers or the biggest zapcos or anything you can imagine tube technology or arc audio then you need space a lot of space for the amps you need a lot of space for doing proper wiring you know separating signal from power um not to mention weight so these are these are pretty pretty important things when it when when it comes to an installation um unless you really don't care and you just you know screw your amplifiers to the back seat to the rear seat um let them scratch up and and all, you know but i wouldn't suggest that so as you see this is a way more complex picture when it comes to an amplifier selection um but even if you have really old school amplifiers you don't you don't have on and off pop with them uh they have clean signal coming out of them no hiss system noise then don't stress too much about the amplifier at the beginning of uh, building a great system and i would really really focus on on this starting a system a basic system when we end up finishing this series and we can you know carry on pushing the boundaries of of you know speaker selection speaker installation and then going into the depth of the amplifier selection then yes we can talk about why why not to use d plus amp why why to choose a b or a class what what are the benefits and you know the drawbacks of a class amps as well because it's not as simple not as simple as just to buy the best a class amps and then you know that's it no there are drawbacks as well so uh hopefully this gives you a little bit better insight into how to select an amplifier and and then after this we can talk about speaker selection in the next video which will be more important than probably anything else in this series so guys let me know what you think about this video um and also i would encourage all those people who give me you know thumbs down come on then write down what what you don't like um i'm all up for that i i want to see how i can improve taking the video or sharing my knowledge with you guys uh, so don't just press a button because that's lazy as fuck sorry um, it, it takes me a lot of time and effort to to share all this knowledge with you to help you to to achieve what you what you want and then i'm interested what you didn't like so feel free to share with guys and if you're not subscribed then then please do so and then hopefully i can talk to you very soon in the next one take care